فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ There is nothing more beautiful than beautiful patience. It's inspiring to us when we can see it in others, and it's even more endearing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sees us for what we actually are and who knows what we're actually going through. And you know, there could be someone with an obvious hardship walking around and people naturally feel sorry for them because they can observe their pain. And then you have those that show signs that they're hurting in ways that are harder to see, but an observant eye can see them. And then you have those that seem to be living the life, but they have no sense of purpose, no sense of contentment. So it's all superficial. And some of the most tortured souls move around in this world in the most pristine disguises. And some of the most content people are often in the most distressing outward appearance. And for those people, you marvel sometimes at their sabr, at their patience. You look at them and wallahi, you're like, how is it that these people are going through so much, but they're so content? And it's actually a miracle in and of itself. And that's why the Prophet said, it's ajab, it's a wonder that some people have patience in that regard. And the reality is that that tranquility is generated through the perspective that they have in this life, but also the paradise that they know awaits them in the next, so long as they remain in the state of prophetic patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجَزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says that whoever does good from the believing men or the believing women, then we will certainly give them a good life. And then in the hereafter, we're going to reward them in accordance with the best of their deeds. If you notice here, the scholars point out that Allah says in this life, you get contentment. The good life is contentment. As for the jaza, the true reward, that's in the hereafter. That's not meant to be in this life. And Imam Ibn Ata'illah rahimahullah says something beautiful in this regard. He says, إِنَّمَا جَعَلَ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ مَحَلًّا لِجَزَاءِ عِبَادِهِ لِأَنَّ هَذِهِ الدَّارِ لَا تَسَعْ مَا يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُعْطِيَهُمْ وَلِأَنَّهُ أَجَلَّ أَقْدَارَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُجَازِيهِمْ فِي دَارٍ لَا بَقَاءَ لَهَا He said that Allah has made the home of the hereafter, the place where He gives His reward to His believing servants. Because this realm, this dar, doesn't fit what Allah wants to give us. And he has honored his believers beyond giving them their reward in a place that is so temporary. This realm can't fit what Allah wants to give you as a reward. It's too limited in its nature. And let's say Allah gave you everything you wanted in this world. You still wouldn't be able to take anything of it with you when you die and you go to the hereafter. So when it comes to unanswered du'as, these are things that you've been putting forward and you have been waiting to see come to reality in the hereafter. When it comes to trials, these are things you are bearing with patience, knowing that Allah has put you on a plan for your ultimate success. There are several ways that we understand these trials in this regard. Number one, we're taught that Allah hastens the trials of this world so that you don't have trials in the next. The Prophet said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ عَجَّلَ لَهُ الْعُقُوبَةَ فِي الدُّنْيَا The Prophet said that if Allah wants good for his servant, then he hastens his hardship in this world so that there is no hardship left in the hereafter. So that's one. The hardships of this world eliminate the hardship of the hereafter. Number two, Allah wipes out every single sin so that you meet him sinless on the day of judgment. The Prophet said, مَا يَزَالُ الْبَلَاءَ بِالْمُؤْمِنْ وَالْمُؤْمِنَ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَمَالِهِ حَتَّى يَلْقَ اللَّهَ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئًا that the believing men and women will continue to be put through tests and trials with their selves, with their families, with their wealth, with everything that they have until they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't have a single sin on them. So Allah azza wa jal expiates those sins from you. So the hardships remove hardship. The hardships remove sins which cause hardship in the hereafter. But then there's a third thing we learn from our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah uses those trials to elevate you to a position that you otherwise were not going to be able to reach. The Prophet said, Inna rajula la yakunu lahu al-manzila that a person has a station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
فما يبلغها بعمل but he doesn't reach that station by his deeds فلا يزال الله يبتليه بما يكره حتى يبلغه إياها so Allah continues to test that person until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers them to that station that he has intended for them so hardships expiate hardships hardships expiate sins that cause hardship in the hereafter and hardships can deliver you to a position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that deeds really can't and there's the scene of people on the day of judgment looking at another group of people and the prophet sallallahu said on the day of judgment حين يعطى اهل البلاء الثواب when اهل البلاء اهل البلاء are people who have suffered major hardships when Allah is giving them their reward you have this other group of people that are known as Ahlul Afiyah, people that were generally spared. And they would wish, as they're seeing Allah comfort these people and reward these people and elevate these people, that they could come back to this life and their skins could be cut to pieces with scissors. Why? Because they see the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats these people that lived hard lives. Someone might say, but what about all the memories and the trauma from before? Right? Like the reward is nice now. What about all the pain I suffered in this dunya? The Prophet ﷺ said on the day of judgment, The believer who suffered the most hardship and trouble in this life will be brought forth. And I want you to think about this. The person who suffered most amongst the believers. I mean, how much would this person have gone through, right? With their health, with their wealth, with their family. The person who had the most unimaginably difficult life is brought forth from amongst the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, dip him once in Jannah, just one dip in paradise. And after he is dipped in paradise, he's asked, Have you ever seen any hardship? Have you ever suffered any type of trouble? And that person is going to say, I've never seen any hardship. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know where the trouble is. Why? Because of one dip in paradise. So imagine then the person who has palaces in paradise because of the way that they bore the trials that came to them in this life. And Allah Azza wa Jal says what? إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حساب. Allah will continue to reward the people of patience without any limits whatsoever. Unlike good deeds, the sabr is rewarded. Patience is rewarded without measure. And the scholars say because Allah knows the ways in which hardship affects us in so many dimensions, often in ways we don't even fully understand. We can't fully connect the way that we've been hurt by something. And that same Lord who knows you is now going to reward you for every part of that trial with all sorts of bounties. And that's from His Rahmah, that's from His mercy. And on the day of judgment, you're experiencing that mercy so much more. So Imam al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that verily on the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth, he created 100 portions of rahmah, 100 portions of mercy. Each part of that 100 portion can fill what is between the heavens and the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave one portion of that mercy to this earth. From that one portion of Allah's rahmah here, a mother has compassion for her child. Animals and birds have compassion for each other. But on the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is going to perfect his rahmah, meaning the other 99 portions of mercy. Allah Azzawajal has chosen to leave that for the day of judgment. Think of how Allah consoles the grieving one then. Think of the most merciful mother you've ever seen and her comforting her child. That is just a tiny bit of one of those portions of mercy. And now Allah with 99% of that mercy, 99 portions on that day of judgment, is comforting those who went through hardship in this life. And that's when that mercy is going to be most rewarding. And you know what? That mercy is most needed, not in regards to the hardships that we suffered in this life, but the possible consequences of the sins that we have carried with us into the hereafter.
فهو في عيشة راضية